Hi, I'm Eric. I'm here with DR Power, and today we are going to walk you through the assembly of your new Pro Max 450 Leaf and Lawn Vacuum. Once you have everything out of the box, the first thing we're going to want to install are the wheels and axle. In order to install the wheels and axle, you'll need to grab your hardware, which is found in your product pack in a combined bag shown here. With the hardware out of the bag and laid out, you'll notice four washers, two cotter pins, and four nuts and bolts. For this build, you will not need the four nuts and bolts, and they can be discarded. With your hardware laid out, the first thing you can do is grab your axle, and you're going to want to feed this through the bracket so that it comes out on the other side. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to line up, and you may have to look through the other side to make sure it comes through lined up and the axle is able to slide through. With your axle installed, the next thing you're going to want to do is put your wheels on. One thing to note is that the valve stem want, you want to face in when you put on the first wheel. With your first wheel installed, you'll take one of your washers and slide it on the axle before installing your second wheel. With the washer in place, you can then grab your second wheel this time you want your valve stem facing out. And you finish by adding an external washer. With both wheels and washers on, you're going to want to slide your cotter pin through the axle and push it all the way against the washer so that it's tight. With your cotter pin in place, you're going to want to take two pliers holding one end firmly grabbing the other end and bending that pin back on both sides so that it can't come out. With the first set of wheels installed, you're going to want to re repeat the same steps with the next set of wheels. Again, keeping in mind the valve stem. With your wheels and axles now assembled, you can now flip this bed upright. Next, we'll want to install the second half of the collector bed. We can grab the piece and lay it over top of the frame. aligning the holes on each piece. The hardware you need to install the bed will be found in the product pack and will include six two and three quarter inch long carriage bolts and nuts. With your hardware in hand, you can drop your carriage bolts through this square hole, making sure they sit flush. When tightening the carriage bolt, you want to make sure the head is seated completely down and in the square channel, so that way you can ensure a tight fit. The next thing we're going to want to do is install the chute onto the power unit. The first step will be removing the starter keys from the impeller housing. You can do this simply by cutting the zip tie off with a pair of scissors. With the keys removed, you can either put them in a safe place or put them right in the starter. Before installing the chute, we're going to want to put the lock washer followed by the washer on each of the four bolts. With your hardware in hand, you can now install the chute onto the impeller housing. You want to keep in mind the direction of the chute going away from the jack stand. With the chute installed, you can then install your hardware, locating each four holes, two in the front, two in the back, and initially putting them on finger tight. With all four bolts finger tight, you can come back through with a half inch socket and ratchet and tighten them down. Next, we will be joining the power unit to the cart bed. 
In order to do this, you will need the remaining two bolts and nuts from the small product pack, as well as two clevis pins, three and a half inch, and their hairpin clips. To join the power unit to the cart bed, you'll want to align the square tube into the channel of the power unit. As the cart bed comes into the power unit, you're going to want to wait until the holes line up. When they do, you can slide one of your clevis pins in and through the other side and secure it with your hairpin clip. The preferred method to install both the power unit and the cart bed is to utilize a jack stand. If a jack stand is not available, you can call for a helper to help assist in aligning. So CJ here is going to pull up on the cart bed to help align the second hole. You may need to rock the power unit left to right in order to give you better alignment. The next thing you'll want to do is to completely fasten the power unit to the cart bed utilizing the two bolts and nuts. The first bolt will go right in front of the engine and will drop right down through the square tube and out the bottom. You can then take your nut and finger tight as far as you can. The next bolt goes behind the engine and drops through from the top all the way down through and out the bottom. You can finger tight the nut as far as you can go. With both bolts finger tight, you can now come in and snug them up using a 3 quarter inch wrench and 3 quarter inch socket. Now that the power unit is joined to the collector frame, you can connect your linear actuator by plugging in the plug. Keep in mind, if you want to disconnect the power unit at the end of the season, that you'll want to be sure to unplug this connection before separating the two. Next, we'll want to install the canvas onto the collector bed. We can place our canvas on the collector bed. Laying it out so that the DR logo is facing away from you. With the canvas laid out, we can now grab our tube frames. Keep in mind one end is shorter than the other. We will want the short end towards the front of the machine. We will then slide the tube frame into the sleeves. With the first tube installed, you'll then want to flip the canvas over. So now the DR logo faces you. With the canvas now flipped, you want to stand on the other side of the machine and take your remaining tube frame. Again, keeping in mind the short end will be in the front. You want to feed your tube frame through the sleeves just as you did on the other side. Next we'll want to install the four brackets onto the collector. You'll need eight inch and a quarter hex head bolts and eight nuts in order to do this. With your hardware in hand, you're going to want to approach the front of the machine with a corner bracket, sliding that corner bracket over the tube, oriented as shown. You're going to want to align the holes with the holes in the tube, slide your bolts through the holes and out the other side, and finger tight each nut onto the bolts. For the other front bracket, you're going to want to slide the piece over the tube with the flat end on the bed and the straight end pointing up towards the other bracket. Line up your holes, slide each bolt through the holes, finger tight the nut once again for both 
for both holes. Similarly, you'll want to install the back corner brackets onto the tube frame, keeping in mind the bracket will face in towards the canvas. Again, align both bolts and finger tight each nut. With all four brackets installed, you can now lift the canvas upright and rest it on the cart bed. Aligning each hole in the corner so that the tube frame sits into it. At this point, we can fasten each corner bracket using the six thumb screws. Starting from the back, we'll take a thumb screw and go up through the bottom of the cart bed and into the weld nut on the bracket. On the front of the machine, you'll need two thumb screws. Again, feeding the thumb screw up through the bottom of the cart bed and into the weld nut. Repeat the process on the remaining two corner and front brackets. For the next part of the assembly, we will use four carriage bolts and four thumb screws. So we'll start on the front of the machine, installing the front cross support member. In order to do this, we get it in place. We then take our carriage bolt, slide it through the square hole, align the frame to the hole, finger tight a thumb screw onto that carriage bolt, and repeat on the other side. Now that your front cross support bar is in place, we're going to want to attach the canvas to the bar. We pull the front canvas up and around the bar, that way the Velcro is on top of the bar. Pull your top piece, stick the first piece of Velcro on the top, and then pull it around so that you're Velcroing to the front of the machine as well. Working around the machine, we next want to secure the canvas along the sides. To do this, we can undo the Velcro if it's stuck together. Pull the top piece over top of the bar. and secure your Velcro as shown. When you're finished with this side, you're gonna to wanna to repeat the steps along the other side. Next, you wanna take your straight bar and feed it through the back, through the sleeve, out the other side. You'll take your remaining two carriage bolts, feed it through the tube, align it to the hole, and secure with the thumb screw on the back side. You want to do this on both sides. The only thing that's remaining on the canvas is inserting six battens, four long length, two short length, as well as one metal retainer. So we'll start by inserting the short battens into the side doors. So in order to do this, we're going to unclip each buckle to open the doors. You're gonna see one side of the door here, which is where our batten will go. You take your batten. The top has a slit that you can feed the batten through. You'll wanna twist the canvas as you push it down through and slide the batten all the way through to the very bottom. And then you can pull the end closed. You wanna do the same thing for the other door. Next, we'll want to slide the metal retainer through the back door. You can first unclip the bottom door flap. Come around to the side, you'll see a Velcro area here. We're going to want to open that Velcro area and slide the metal retainer through. Re-Velcro on the other side. The last step is to install the four long battens into the side of the canvas. So we can flip this door up and out of the way. You'll see there's two 
areas for each batten on either side of the canvas. Start by taking your batten, sliding it at an angle into the hole, pushing it all the way forward, and buttoning it shut. Do this for each of the four battens. It helps to go at a bit of an angle to get it initially engaged and then slide it all the way forward and your final two battens on the other side. With all the battens installed we can now close the rear door. You'll notice that the first inner flap has a magnetic seal so you pull the magnets up, they clip in to the top door. Your side doors can be held with a buckle on the side. We can bring each side door over and clip the four buckles to close the canvas completely. So now that the canvas is assembled onto the machine, we're going to want to go back through and tighten up any hardware we left loose. We'll start in the back and work our way around. For all these hex heads, you're going to need a half inch wrench and a half inch socket. The last thing you'll want to do is make sure the canvas sides are tight. We do this by taking this side flap, pulling it around the bar, pulling very tight to ensure a very tight side, and velcroing it back to the front of the canvas. We do that for both sides. Lastly, you can pull the canvas sock over the chute and make sure it's tight. Next, we're going to want to cut this tube into two pieces. So what we'll do is we'll mark it with a marker. So in between the two ring clamps, we're going to mark a line across the rib and then start cutting all the way around the clear part of the tube. This will show you where your cut will be. First, we're going to snip the black line across the rib in which we've drawn. We're going to use wire clippers to snip that. Next, we're going to follow along our line with an exacto. With your two pieces cut, you can now remove the coupler from one side. If you need to loosen this to get it out, you can do so with a flathead screwdriver. Take the coupler, place it in between each piece. Again, we're going to want to loosen these ring clamps with a flathead screwdriver. The goal is to position this rivet on the other side of the ring clamp, that way it doesn't escape. So first I'll loosen both sides. With both sides loose, you should now be able to fit the coupler underneath the ring clamp on both sides. With the rivet on both sides, I can now tighten back up the ring clamps. With the coupler in position, you're going to want to make sure your rivet is on both sides of each ring clamp. And then you're going to want to tighten each ring clamp on both sides. So now that your hose is cut and your coupler is in place, we can attach the hose to the impeller. We bring it up, fit it snug against the impeller housing tighten down the ring clamp so it's secure. The last step to secure the hose is to take your rod support, feed it down through the bracket, 
take your bungee cord, attach it to the rod support by sliding it over the rod, sliding one end over the rod. The other end will loop around the hose and back up around the rod. The last piece of hardware you'll need is your hitch pin and a rubber washer. So you can slide your rubber washer over the pin, drop it down on your hitch, and leave your hairpin clip on it until you're ready to tow. The only thing that's left to run your machine is to provide it oil and gas. Other than that, you're all set up and ready to tow. If you have any other questions, please refer to your operator manual or give us a call.